All right, YouTube, Bill Clinton was talking to CBS News, and he said that Hillary Clinton has frequently collapsed in the past. They tried to edit this out to, you know, he, he rephrased and said, oh, no, it's only happened rarely on second thought. And they tried to edit it so it would look like he had said that Hillary had only rarely collapsed in the past. Now, why would you mention past collapses at all? Oh, well, don't worry, it only happens rarely. What's rarely? You know, we already know that Bill Clinton's the guy who said it depends on what your definition of is is. Depends on what your definition of sex is. No, I, I didn't have sexual relations with that woman. I'm not going to answer whether I touched her boobs and stuck a cigar inside of her asshole or anything like that. So what is rare? Is rare 20 times, 30 times? This is a person, we know she has had at least five falls in the last half decade. That's an abnormal amount. We're not talking, oh, well, stumbled on a brick or something. No, we're talking just randomly keels over or falls going up the stairs or something like that. And that's just what we know of that she's had. Three of those times have been in open public view, including this last 9-11 just a few days ago. How many more times has she fallen? Normally, if a person's pushing 70 and they're falling frequently, where do they end up? They go to the old folks' home because either their family or the state taking them in as a ward will say, oh, well, this person, obviously, they can't care for themselves. Randomly hit their head on a corner, get knocked out, lay there gargling on their own blood, unable to get up or call 911, and they fucking die. Normally, that's what would happen. Apparently, it doesn't happen if you're, you know, a half-assed presidential candidate. The bill also called Hillary a demon, said, she, oh, yeah, she works like a demon, as in she works hard, I guess. And this was the explanation given as to why she, like, randomly passes out and falls over and gets dehydrated and has coughing fits. Now, which is it? This is the third time we've gotten a different variant of what the fuck's wrong with her. It's allergies, it's pneumonia, oh, she just works too hard, gets dehydrated all the time. Which one is it? Or is it all of the above? Does she have, like, severe allergies and she's caught pneumonia recently and she's just generally fucked up and, and easily dehydrated? I would think that these would be legitimate medical concerns. Uh, I was watching... I've already called out the amazing atheist and said I don't really like his material. I think it's funny that he probably leaked his own sex tapes on a couple of occasions. And I'm not an atheist. But I will appreciate the amazing atheist for, for being somebody who generally, in the past at least, seemed like a far leftist, like someone who would be like made for the Hillary campaign. And even he's saying, oh, there's a legitimate question about her health. So I can respect him for that, by the way. You should check out his video on the subject. And it's true. That this is a legitimate question at this point. Normally, people who are healthy do not randomly have prolonged coughing fits. They don't fall over half a dozen times in half a decade. They don't randomly pass out. They don't appear to have seizures. They don't catch pneumonia all the time, which I guess is, if that's the explanation for these coughing fits... Again, check out his video. There are all sorts of coughing fits going back almost 10 years that she's had. Has she caught pneumonia six or seven times in the last 10 years? What the fuck is wrong with this woman? Now, a lot of people, unfortunately, fixated on the use of the term demon. They said, oh, he's revealing how demonic and evil she... And that's not what he was saying. He was trying to connote the fact that she works hard like a demon. She's like got a demonic rate of speed with which she gets things done. That doesn't make sense, though. When she was in the Senate, what did she do? But fuck nothing either th other than uh, vote for the war in Iraq. Nothing. State Department, seems like most of the time, all she did was fucking send emails on an unsecured server. First Lady, not even an official office. She doesn't work like a demon. She, half her time, she's taken off campaigning. She has it's half a dozen times now she hasn't bothered to show up for the rally or the fundraiser. And she spends more time fundraising than rallying anyway. I can understand why, when you can't even get 500 people into a high school gymnasium, what the hell is the point? As opposed to maybe your opponent in the primaries who could at least pull in four or 5,000 people, or your opponent in the general who can top 20,000 on a good day. I can understand why she doesn't bother rallying around with the little people. Because it's clear, no, nobody in the working class who's not completely and utterly indoctrinated into thinking the D after her name has any significance at all is even supporting her at this point. She's got the rich, she's got minority voters who think that she's a social progressive even though she's not and that's a declining number 
Look at how much Trump is sweeping up with the minority vote now. He's, he's well ahead of Romney with Hispanics. He's well ahead with black voters at this point. He's well ahead with females. And if this trend continues until the election, or even just for another couple of weeks, yeah, not only will he be ahead in the polls, which you know, he already is in at least three of the swing states, and he's still advancing over time. He's, he's rising right now. Hillary Clinton's falling. Now we have a new round of DNC leaks. This isn't even WikiLeaks. This isn't even the main leak that's going to be coming from Julian Assange. This is just Guccifer 2.0, who happened to crack the DNC systems. And they're saying, um, uh, of course, as before, what does Hillary say? What do the Democrats say? Oh, the Russians are doing it. Donna Brazil comes out, head of the DNC. I would encourage people not to read through these because they may be infected with malware and they only help Putin and Trump. Are you fucking out of your mind? You must have been to Colorado or Washington State recently and you bought a whole pound you bought a whole pound and you smoked it down and you're still hung over from the effects. You're so blasted out of your mind from smoking your little water pipe that you don't even understand quite what's in proximity to you. You're not even aware of your surroundings, I think, at this point. Only helps Trump and Putin. What? The fact that the, that the Democratic Party is so awkwardly corrupt that they call their donors clowns, which I'm sure is one of the reasons they didn't want their own fans to read through these things, that they blame everything on Putin or some other grand conspiracy, that they call somebody a bigot who clearly at this point most people realize is not a bigot, they call Hispanic voters part of their Taco Bowl outreach, and, and they have a, a reason to try to warn people off of reading these things, I can understand why. I can understand why Donna Brazil does not want, you know, after they get rid of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, they have, I can't remember her name in there for like a few hours, then they kick her out because she's implicated, then they get Donna Brazil on board, they've kicked out several major staffers, several people have resigned, including their, I think their CEO or CFO of the DNC, which by the way, more proof, it's just a corporation. Political parties in this country are corporations, this is all they are. It's a corporation. It's a money-making endeavor. Why do you think Hillary Clinton goes to $10,000 a plate fundraisers more often than she goes to meet with Farmer John? Farmer John's not going to cut her a $10,000 check. She doesn't give a fuck about Farmer John. Whereas Trump, <laughs> he's not fundraising heartily at all. He's had like, what, two or three fundraisers with some big wigs? The rest of the time, what's he doing? He's campaigning with normal people. Now, you can call them deplorable individuals if you want. I would hazard a guess, though, that if you look at some of these rallies, it was 10, 15, 20,000 people. Are you indicating a belief that they're all Nazis? What about Ben Carson? Is he like the blackest man in the Ku Klux Klan? Or the doctor of common sense right here on YouTube? He's black, too. Are you, do you think that he's like a neo-Nazi or something? Be very funny. I, I do admit it would be funny to see him come out with the uh, the Stahlheim and a swastika emblazoned on his arm, ranting about Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, or something like that. Okay, that'd be very funny. But uh, I, I'm going to hazard a guess and say, yeah, it's just a bunch of bullcrap. It's funny to see the media trying desperately to defend a candidate who's done so many indefensible things and their structural framework of protection around Hillary has begun to break down pretty badly. At this point, the number of people epically pissed off at her or who view her as just generally inept, generally untrustworthy, generally completely out of touch with their values is rising swiftly. And that is going to begin to eat away at the share of the vote because this is the big thing. It's always been the number one reason why I've given Trump the advantage here. Most Trump supporters, because of the way Trump was portrayed, are hardened. They like Trump. You're not going to convince them to switch allegiance unless he himself makes some major mistake. And obviously he hasn't done that yet. Most of Hillary Clinton's support is soft. They don't like Hillary Clinton. They just dislike Trump more. With each steady leak, with each scandal, with each question of her health, with all of these different things that happen, it eats away slowly, drip by drip, like the slow wearing away the erosion of a rock in a river canyon that's usually dry and now it's suddenly being inundated and poured upon. It erodes her soft support because there are people there that are on the very fringe mentally of switching over to vote for Trump or a third party. 
And this has happened. Uh, Gary Johnson's already been bolstered by a lot of these people because he got media exposure. That's what was, that was like the death knell of Hillary Clinton's campaign. He does have a part in doing it. Jill Stein as well. Jill Stein's still going after her actively on a day-to-day -day basis. There are plenty of people, probably millions of people, who with a very small nudge will suddenly be backing somebody other than Hillary Rodham Clinton. And with each successive leak and each scandal, it gets closer and closer. You're going to see the epic erosion of her soft support before the end of this campaign. And it is that, I believe, that tips it in favor of Trump. I think he'll be a few points ahead in the general, and that's not considering turnout. What do you think that's going to do? Republican turnout was already legendarily high in the primaries. Democratic turnout was far lower than it's been for the last few cycles. If that continues, if, if that holds true through the general election, he gets a point or two boost just among independent voters in, and you know higher turnout among his core supporters than Hillary gets, even without weighing the polls at large anyway. They would probably have to rig uh, the voting results five to ten points against him to steal the election. I don't think that they're prepared or capable of doing that. If there's any rigging at all, it's a matter of less than a point that happens in these cases. Otherwise, it's too easily noticed. They can't rig them that much. That's why they try to keep elections close. They hope that it's close. And generally, because the two candidates are a neocon and a neoliberal, they don't care who wins. Why would they rig the polls? Why, for instance, would they care whether Al Gore or W won? They're the same thing. Or John Kerry and Bush. They, they just don't give a fuck. Or Obama and McCain. Who cares? Obama and Romney. They're all the same. They're all friends with each other. Look at how these people talk. Look at who they're supporting, where their money goes, who's connected to their foundations. They're all on the same side. The outlier is, of course, we've got two strong third parties, and then we've got Trump, who's not in their club. And it's very funny, with all the fiscal san uh, scandals surrounding the DNC leak with the pay-to-play, which is obvious at this point that that was happening. I think any moron would understand that to be the case. It's very funny to see them trying to talk about the Trump Foundation where there's no actual evidence that that happened. Now, if evidence comes forward, then I'd be the first person to say, oh, yeah, well, it's screwy. Yeah, there's some embezzlement there. Maybe pay to play. Although Trump was not a politician at the time, I think there's a little bit different there. You see, Clinton was a senator and a secretary of state at the time, whereas Trump was just some businessman. He wasn't in an elected capacity. Therein lies at least a slight difference in my mind. Now, we'll, we'll wait to see what sort of evidence they come forth with. I'm going to say it's all smoke and mirrors, though. I think they're just covering for Hillary and the Clinton Foundation. Because I keep seeing them try to declare her honest. Oh, she tells the truth more than any other candidate in history. You people are retarded if you think that anybody, any independent voter, is going to take that seriously. You don't have to be a Trump fan to understand that that's it's not true. I mean, most Clinton fans know she's dishonest. They just think that she's better than Trump. And it's those people that are going to be abandoning her in droves, and many of them will stay home. They won't vote at all. Hillary Clinton might end up pulling in millions fewer votes than Obama did in 2012, or Al Gore, or John Kerry. She'll be far behind them, I think. The sense of malaise permeating the independent voters with respect to both candidates, but especially Clinton, is high. Trump has a 20-point advantage with independent voters, including many people that haven't made up their minds fully yet. I think that virtually all of them will end up backing Donald Trump. That's about all. Peace out.